positive perspective, one of the most interesting hours in radio, where we shine the positive light of Jesus Christ on the scriptures, music, our communities, and world issues. We're broadcasting live from Skid Row Studios in beautiful downtown Los Angeles. Hi, I'm Willis Boyd. And I'm Shante Duncan. And, and you're, you're listening, listening to, to Positive, Positive Perspective. Perspective. Our in-studio uh, visitor tonight is, or guest tonight, is Brad-ish. No, sorry, Samuels. <laughs> and Anthony. Anthony, I don't know your last name. Romero. Anthony Romero. And um, very interesting show tonight. Um, um, I met Brad at the gym. Um, and it seemed like a lively person. I can tell he's obviously in shape. <laughs> and um, he's also Jewish. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know that looking at him. But, you know, we kind of talked and, um, you know, some things come out and stuff. And I'm very interested in Jewish people and their culture and that whole thing. So he agreed to come on the show and let us um, ask him some questions and um, further our knowledge, knowledge and curiosities about Jewish people. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing very well, thank you. Okay, and we also have Denise Boyd and beautiful co-host Shante. <laughs> okay, so, um, Shante, ask this man some questions. Um, I just kind of wanted to get, I guess we can discuss your background and how you were <clears throat> raised Jewish and what that whole process was like. Um... Well, I started going to Hebrew school at uh, age seven or eight, and you go there for about three or four years. So you become fluent in reading and writing Hebrew, mm -hmm. and that's kind of training for your bar mitzvah, actually, because you have to read from the Torah for about an hour, <laughs> and uh, it's all in Hebrew. So um, does it you have to have, like, a portion memorized? Uh, yes, and, and I do what, have a small portion. What's that process like on... on you know, doing that. Memorizing it? Yeah. I, I don't exactly remember because I don't think it was a very large amount of stuff I had to memorize. They, mm. they basically pull it out, the Torah, and uh, you read from it. Um, they have a section picked out that you read from. It's a very, very, very big book. <laughs> um, and that, that's kind of, you, you train on what you're supposed to read from the get-go, and you usually, start you usually start training to read from it about a year before. So you sound like you were raised like an Orthodox um, in a Jewish home? No, I was raised in a conservative home, which okay. is kind of like mid-level intensity, okay. if you want to okay. call it that. Um, reform would be the least, okay. less intense, and that's kind of the most common in America right now. Um, I did go to a reform temple for a few years, and uh, I think my parents saw me acting up and maybe sent me to a little more strict one. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, um, and you're, um, you were raised where? In Cleveland, Ohio. Okay, what was that like? Very cold. <laughs> <laughs> well, where I was raised, actually, uh, it was very Jewish. You know, very, very Jewish area. Uh -huh. uh, the name of the town is Beechwood, actually. It's a town just outside of Cleveland. I wasn't raised within the city limits. Um, you know, it, uh, I, it was an experience growing up there. It was very, uh, very utopian-like. Mutopian? Utopian, like. Oh, yes. utopian. Utopian. Like, almost I thought like you a, said mutopian. I don't know. What <laughs> utopian. That? Almost like a perfect world. Uh -huh. yeah, I, yeah. I grew up in an area where we could have left our doors unlocked at night and nothing would have happened. Uh, we never did, though. <laughs> <laughs> so was the... Because uh, my parents are from Pennsylvania, and I know when we've gone and, and uh, back there to visit, areas in that part of the country are, you know, predominantly, like, that one area my aunt lives in is all Italians live in that area. Then you have the Irish that live in one area. So your town was basically all Jewish living in that town? Yeah, the name of the town is Beechwood, and I believe the last um, last stat I saw was that it's 85% Jewish. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And probably the rest, uh, I'd probably say 10% black and 4% other. You said 10%? I would say 10%, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, um, but like I say, you know, I was saying about the utopian aspect. Um, I've been in California for nine years on this tour. I lived here uh, also in 2000 for 
about two years. I lived in L.A. and then San Diego. And I am um, very, 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 very different. Very different sociologically growing up uh -huh. here. Uh -huh. Growing up there, I'm sorry. And uh, Okay, but how long you say you were here? I've been here since 2005. I moved here in August of 2005. I lived here in... I moved here at the end of 1999 and then moved out in the beginning of 2001. Okay, so wh what part of L.A. were you in when you were here? I was in Hollywood and Sunland. Hmm. And I was working for an advertising company. Oh, I, get a, I had a uh, job, actually, a job offer from a friend back home who... They had a base. They also had an office in Cleveland, so... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He wanted to, I wanted to get out of Cleveland, actually, because of some issues I was having. So I moved out here for a different, uh, you know, a fresh start. Uh -huh. And uh, it didn't work out that well, so I moved back home. Oh, you went back to Cleveland? Yeah, I went back to Cleveland. My family had a business back there, so I could just jump back there and work there. And uh -huh. I stepped out into the real world and was getting beat up. You were getting hammered? <laughs> getting hammered. So yeah. you say you went to San Diego as well? Yes, I lived down there for a little while. And whereabouts did you live there? Uh, Pacific Beach. Right on the beach, actually. And you, you live there. I live there, and I can say that it was probably the most miserable time of my life. Oh, why? <laughs> why do you say that? Nah, it was, uh, you know, and doing drugs, a lot of drugs back then. And uh -huh, uh -huh. Just not, just down. Oh, mm -hmm. I got yeah. you. I'm like, was, San, San Diego is awesome. Oh, it was. <laughs> Sandy a, beaches, you're just yeah. like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I lived right on the beach. I lived, literally, I could toss a stone, and it, it would be on the beach, even if I didn't have a strong arm. <laughs> <laughs> so growing up in um, Cleveland in a, in a predominantly Jewish town and moving out to California where it's a little more liberal. It's and, a little more goyish. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, a lot of Gentiles <laughs> here, yes. <laughs> Was that hard to try to adjust Many to because, because it's almost like a sheltered life when you live in a town that everybody's pretty much the same? Yeah, it, absolutely. That's exactly a, a very good way to put it. Sheltered here, it's, it's kind of like the jungle. Yeah, You know, just all of, you know, you're right, though, it's very liberal, you know, but um, everything is here, every aspect. It's like a, you know, it's just a melting pot of, of mm -hmm. you know, ideologies, views, and a lot of other things. It's not okay, just... Okay, now, the drug thing, did you get into that before you left home, or did that happen when you culture shocked out here? No, 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 I was... Um, that got back. I started doing that back in Cleveland, and looking back at my childhood and life, I almost think that I was... Destined to do that, to fall into that. Yeah, it's kind of weird saying that. A that, little bit, that, yes. that was predestined. Well, I wouldn't say it was predestined. Um, you know, I, I have, you know, I've, my insecurities and stuff as a child and, you know, even growing up into my teens and early childhood, looking back on it, it seemed very, very, very likely that that would have happened. Because of the why questions? Um, what do you mean exactly? Like, the answers that you were looking for that maybe you couldn't find. I wasn't really looking for answers back then. I was looking for excitement. <laughs> and yeah. I was looking for a something, life... Something different? Yeah, yeah. Something outside of a normal life. You know mm -hmm. the, you know how people think that sometimes they're destined for, you know, great things or, you know, bigger things than your average person. So was your life really structured and your parents had kind of planned, this is what you're going to be when you grow up? Um... In general, kind of, you know, uh, you know, you have to do this, you have to go to college, you, to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, not that it's a bad thing to say things right, like that, right. or, but, you know, you, I was never molded into doing something specific, if that's what you mean. Mm -hmm. There was nothing, you know, saying. You're going to be a doctor. There wasn't I was like just that. thinking that, <laughs> yeah, or a lawyer. Yeah. Right, right. The stereotypes again that we're saying. <laughs> but I wish I would have been one. You know, I would have became one. Yeah, well, you seem intelligent enough, in my opinion. Thank you. To, um, to handle yourself in those areas um so how did you get out of the drug scene then if you were you know kind of drawn into that as looking for excitement jail actually okay. <laughs> incarceration incarceration <laughs> the, the the you know the inhumane incarceration um although uh in my case i didn't do you know I, I had a few stints in jail and did a little bit of time but it was the shock of losing my freedom Mm -hmm. it, it set me, it's interesting because it set me onto a, the first time I got in trouble was in 2005 and I had already been a drug addict for a decade at that point pretty much and I had never gotten in trouble, I never had any problems getting them, I always had a little bit of money in my pocket to get them and all of a sudden out here things started to, the, the floor started to crack and the mm -hmm. bottom was falling out so, and then I got, in tr I got in trouble, I got arrested and then my life completely changed. Yeah. Okay, now did you do like, did you go to the pen or just? A hard time. <laughs> Uh, yes, I did one prison term uh, in 2009, and I was sentenced to 
nine months total and did... Uh, actually, I was sentenced to 16 months, I'm sorry, and did nine months total. Mm. But I was only in prison. I was in... I was at a reception center, which was in Wasco. I was there for maybe three months, and that was very, very, very shocking. Um, Let's say that again. In Moscow? Wasco, I'm sorry. Oh. Wasco. It's, it's in Bakersfield. It's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a it's prison. Like, in Moscow? Were you a spy? <laughs> no, 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 no. I've never Middle been to Moscow. Land. Yeah, I've, I've <laughs> never been to Moscow. Maybe I'd like to visit one day in the summer. Yeah. You know, but not uh, well, not, be, not, in, not, be not being shipped to a prison out there. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you're, no, I, you've ever seen the way that they, uh, the prisons there is awful. It's... Uh, you guys, the prisons out here, they're they're, they're a like, little more liberal. Yeah, yeah, they're like picnics, walks in the parks compared to oh, flat screen TVs and HD and football <laughs> and and three square hot meals and you can sleep all day. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. tell me about being Jewish though in the state pen, or was it federal? No, state, 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 okay. state. No, I, I didn't. You didn't have the clout to get. Federal. No, I didn't. No, I, I'm not a. Uh, I'm not a hardened criminal. It was just uh, off of some uh, probation violations actually oh, that sent me to prison. Okay. Um, it was actually my choice to go to prison, believe it or not. Um, I wanted to get off of probation and I couldn't stand, you know, reporting in anymore to a, you know, an authority oh, figure uh -huh, uh -huh, and having uh -huh. them tell me what to do, what to, you know, when to come in and I felt trapped. So mm -hmm. I, I couldn't deal with that anymore. So my option was to either accept a deal that the state had offered me, which was only for four months, but extension of probation. And I said, no, I'll just take the prison. Oh, and get away get from over it. it. Get over it. Because the laws had changed actually in 2009, as, as they do change every year when it comes to prison. Mm -hmm. um, if you're no longer a high level, uh, high level criminal, you do not have to report in to parole officers anymore. It's called NRP, non revocable oh. parole. So that really attracted me. Oh, uh -huh. yeah, that was very attractive to me because another four years of having to report into somebody was um, crazy. Yeah. Now you said something about being Jewish in prison. Because um, we, we were kind of talking about everything's segregated and... Every, you know. Everything's racially segregated and you have, you know, the white car and the white supremacists and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And I'll be completely honest, and this is something I'm a little ashamed of. Um, I had omitted, if you want to say, or lied about being Jewish. I said, you know, maybe I should just keep my mouth shut. And stay alive? Yes. <laughs> not, you know, not get into the arguments or the, you know, the fights, uh -huh. whatever. And uh -huh. I, I did that at first. And then I d thought, I, I can't keep doing this. It's what I am. It's who I am. And it's, you know, if somebody's going to hate me for it, then, you know. Oh, but I mean, when somebody hates you in prison, it's kind of a, you know, it's kind of a, so. Yeah, but that never, that never occurred. I, I have a sense of humor and, uh, you know. Your, your sense of humor got you through? My sense of humor got me through. I was actually, <laughs> I was actually liked. So, you were know. There, were there many other um, like Jewish people there, or no? But I did um, a few. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I did meet a few. There was actually an Israeli I met. Um, weapons charges, believe it or not. <laughs> shock, shock, <laughs> yeah, 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 shock. And um, there was another Jewish kid that grew up in Detroit that I oh, had wow. uh, befriended, and uh, it's funny. Everybody thought that we were brothers. Oh, uh -huh. Yeah, we looked alike, I guess. But uh, would you have the Afro wigs on, or no, 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 no? no. I've been losing head. No, my hair is receding. Oh hey. no, no. Oh, you meant like not brothers, brothers, but. Like, like blood brothers. Oh, blood brothers. Yeah. Brothers. Yeah, 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 I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, no it's okay. <laughs> it's all okay, good. Go, go ahead, go ahead. You, you, they thought you were brothers and... Yeah, and, you know, they, you know, the, the, you know, the making fun of and the, you know, whatever. Oh, but no, uh -huh. nothing, I'm, I'm all about it. It's nothing malicious and it's all in fun. So uh -huh, being yeah. Jewish in prison wasn't that big of a deal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So got to it, so... Yeah. I oh. think it's much harder actually to be black in there. Oh. Is, yeah, and why do you say that? Because everything is racially segregated and, uh, you know, because of the prisoners in there, actually, they do it and the guards go along with it and um, they're outnumbered, I guess, from what I've seen, you know, and there's riots and, you know. Uh -huh. and they get the worst end of it. Uh, yes, in some, at least in some cases, at least, you know, just from what I've seen. Right, you know? right. That's, um, so that, while you were in there, did you see any riots or did you see anything like? Yeah, yeah, I've seen, uh, I've seen a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've actually seen, I, I've seen a few people die. One mm -hmm. person by natural causes, actually. Um, another was stabbed. I didn't actually see it, the, the stabbing happen. I just saw the aftermath. Oh, but it was, uh -huh. uh, it was actually interesting. It was a white guy who was stabbed by other white guys because he was acting black. <laughs> and he, they found out he just had a rock in his shoe, right? Yeah, so, he's walking with that cool walk. Yeah, you know, he had the slang, you know, <laughs> whatever. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. They had a term for it, actually. They referred to him as a white crip, which I didn't get. I, mean, I thought a crip was a, you know, a gang. Right. Yeah. You know, There's but, white crips, right? <laughs> you say. I don't, not no. that I know of. Are they? Bobby? No, yeah, there is. Bobby? I, 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 
Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's, oh, yeah. There's yeah. even there's even white blood. Yeah. That's yeah. Because it's just a gang. It's not like a racially thing. It's a money thing. Isn't if you if you look on Probably. the back terms of the Bloods and Crips, yeah, they even have white people. They have Mexicans, Salvadorans. They do, they don't care about the color. They care about the you money. What color and the, the color money. you're wearing. Right. Because um, think about it. Because if you think about it, if you bring other races into this. You Makes get bigger. a bigger, a bigger plan. So if you mm. bring Cubans, you get Cuban, you get Cuban, you know, goods and all that stuff. So mm. why not bring every race towards it? But mm. mainly, yeah. I think though, what they um, had labeled it as uh, the the definition of, of of the way they put it was just somebody who a white person who had acted black. I don't know if they meant that it was a white yeah. person actually in a gang, mm. you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. because oh, they, but yeah, they they were going to kill him anyway. They they would have found another excuse if they didn't have that one. Probably. I'm glad it wasn't you. Yeah, no, my, I don't have that much uh, hop in my step, you know. I don't have <laughs> no rocks in your shoes. Yeah, no, 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 no. Okay. My vertical leap is low, too. So, <laughs> so you had said that when um, you were in there, when you first went into, into prison, that basically you didn't um, announce that you were Jewish. Um, and then you felt like, well, that, that is my heritage. That is who I am. What are you, are you practicing now, Judaism, or what are your beliefs in that? No, I um, don't practice any religion. I guess you could say that I'm agnostic, you know, okay. in a sense. Um, I, you know, growing up, I, you know, practiced it a lot. And uh, as soon as I got out of the house at 18, I, I stopped doing it. I would go to temple every now and then, you know, just to do it. Mm-hmm. But uh, practicing, no. Okay. And, but, and, but oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go on, no, you go ahead. The A lot of the, the Jewish traditions, um, and I, I would probably be argued with if some of them were here, are to me cultural based not necessarily mm-hmm. religious based mm-hmm. but yeah, i have no problem even you know partaking in the religious you know the religious uh, events that we have in our, in our religion and culture however you want to classify it okay yeah go ahead go ahead Nisi. i was gonna say um one of the things you had talked about earlier is there's different types of judaism what was the type that that you were raised in R- reform uh, conservative but yeah that's yeah, i think you okay. already, already but there are there's that. ascetic and orthodox um mm-hmm. Which are the people you see with the hats and the, you know. Oh How about the little curly thing? They're called, uh, yeah, 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 the locks, they're called. Yeah. That's original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the talus is, you know what a talus is? The talus is the, the thing they wear, thing they wear that hangs, mm. you know, if you can oh. see it hanging below their, their suits. Mm. Now, I can't answer you why they wear, if you were to ask, if uh, the top hats, I don't, I got to ask them that. Why they all wear top hats? Hey, they want to be cool. Yeah, but I mean, the, what's wrong with that, huh? Maybe it's the yarmulke thing, because you know the. I you was going to ask you about that. What did, what did the yarmulkes mean? It's out of respect for for God, you know. Oh, okay. um, but I think that you can wear anything over your head. I've actually in Cleveland, I was I saw somebody wearing a yarmulke that had a Cavs uh, Cleveland Cavaliers basketball <laughs> emblem on it. Yeah, so you know, I think any any kind of thing covering your head will do. Uh huh. But I didn't walk into a uh, temple wearing a baseball hat, but right. you know. Oh yeah. You know. Uh huh. Well, again. If you work, look back years and years and years ago, um, wearing hats inside was disrespectful. Men didn't do that. So just having the, the yarmulke on was like not a brimmed hat or anything like that that probably had something to do with, you know, through the traditions of going on and stuff. That's an interesting thing you say. I've always, I've, I've always asked, and I can't get a straight answer. Maybe here somebody knows, why is it disrespectful to wear a hat inside? I don't really see it. It's a cowboy thing, I think. No, it's way before cowboy time. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, British English stuff, right? Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. I mean, I just know that women used to supposed to cover their heads when they went in church, and men were to take their hats off when they went in, in, into church. Now right? that's um, that's biblical. I mean, if you go, if you're going back like that, is that a, a woman is not supposed to worship with her head uncovered, mm-hmm. and a man is not supposed to worship with his head covered? And there's there's scripture on that, but I'm not. I'd have to. But okay. the the Orthodox do it and the ascetics. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I I think it's in 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 the first five books somewhere. Is it? Yeah, I don't believe it's I, it, it's not New Testament. So wait, so why don't we wear why do we're not allowed to wear hats inside? Um, it, it's it, it's always. I mean, I know I've always been raised. It's just disrespectful for a man to wear a hat inside. Is when you go in, you take your hat off. That's, that's not. That's not. Just church. Yeah. That's always I mean, anywhere. That's well, like, yeah. Well, yeah. when I was a police explorer, we'd always had our hats, and when ever, wherever we were, wherever we were, we had to take it off. Like, so if we entered a building, we'd have mm-hmm. to take it off, and you have to put it on your side. Right. Now, depending on what side you put it on, depends on why you're there. And the reason why our um, police advisor told us that the reason why they do that it's a sign of respect towards the people who died. So pretty oh. much, you know, if my like I have 
aunts and uncles who died. So every time you walk into a place and you have to take off your hat and pretty much it's pretty much giving people respect, respect. who who died for you. So pretty much because God always because in there is a story where God where God walks in and someone's wearing a hat and he said, Take off your hat. And he they're all like and they asked him why. He's all like why and he said, Because that's showing respect towards my father and um it's showing respect towards oh. your loved ones and the ones that passed away. Because if you have a hat on, it's like disrespecting them because you're not in other words, like how I grew up it raising is because the reason why if you have a hat on, it's like God can't see you. Or like mm -hmm. your family members can't see you and they can't identify you. So mm -hmm. like that's what my 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 um church taught me. So that's why every time wherever I went, I'd always take off my beanie or I'd take off my hat. And I do mm -hmm. it just for a short time. Or if I mainly mainly more what they respect more is the is like it has to be done in church. So if you walk into a church with your hat, yeah, you that. need to take it off because even the pastor will come up to you or he will like I've been at churches where they've been like, excuse me, sir, sitting in the third row, third aisle, third pew, three people down, can you please take your hat off? Yeah. And he argued with them. He goes, do you want the Lord to see you? He goes, because you're you feel like because God will feel like you're ashamed of him or you're hiding from him because yeah. of what you what you did in your well, sin. That's yeah, that's a whole another show. And also the courtroom. I mean, yep. you can't. They don't let you do that in the courtroom at all. But you can wear the, the yarmulke in a courtroom. You can. Because it's yeah. religious. Because it's related. a religious head covering, so you can wear that in a courtroom. Well, as long I, as it's I wear my hat religiously. <laughs> if Native Indians can, uh, you know, grow peyote for religious reasons legally, I think we should be allowed to wear a hat in a courtroom. Wow, you guys are getting off topic. I got to <laughs> Sorry, back. sorry, sorry, sorry. But okay. actually, I have something on the topic. Again, I just remembered. Okay, um, go ahead, go ahead. When you walk into a Jewish temple, it is mandatory that you have one on. In fact, they have a box that has mm. yarmulkes in there. I, I think it's a little sanitary. Because it's um, people Jewish sharing yarmulkes. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People <laughs> sharing them, you know. Sanitary. Especially on Saturday and Sunday when, you know, the, the Hasidics and Orthodox don't shower. <laughs> oh, you know? oh, wow. Well, I, I, they're not supposed to use anything mechanical, you know, anything. Uh, the Sabbath? Exactly, to acknowledge right. us from sundown Friday to sunrise. Sundown to the sundown Sunday to sundown, morning. actually. Mm -hmm. It's Friday sundown to Saturday, Saturday sundown. sundown. Oh, okay. Well, so that's interesting. if me and you were to go to one of these, and they they would have to make me wear it, but what if I said I'm not that religion? Like, I don't believe in wearing it. Because I'm Christian, so what I'm saying is, like, if I went with you to one to one of the temples, and you put it on, and you told me to put it on, and I was like, I don't wear it, it's not, again, it's not in my religion and all that, how do you think it would be? The Jews get violent. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> you, no, would I not, I, you would not enter. Well, not necessarily. If he was maybe, in a, if we were, like, in a reformed temple, which is, you know... Reformed. It's not, uh, you know, it's not conservative and it's mm -hmm. not uh, orthodox. It's not extreme. They might be okay with it. They, nobody might, nobody might say anything. I well, don't think it's so. like, even like some restaurants, you know, you have to have a certain tie on. You don't have a certain tie. They have ties they can, you can wear for the night and then you give them back the tie. You know, the same type of principle. If you uh -oh. want to come in here, this is what you're going to do. Right, right. I yeah. think less and less places are know, like that yeah. though. I don't know. Like they're um, being more liberal then? You're right, not as, you know, less and less things are dressy, you know. Yeah. I, I There's less and less codes when it comes to that. I think it's, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, liberal, I guess, is the way to put it when it comes to that. There's a place that's, like, down the street that Cheyenne's been wanting me to take her to. It's like, it's like they dress up like 50s or 60s style. They dress up all vintage, and the only way you can get in is if you're dressed all, like, you know, like, Pachuco doubt pretty much like old school status like all I nice love that dress. stuff the, the, the doo-wop stuff and like, yeah. Yeah, I love that stuff but so, that's okay because they're promoting something I mean like right. that's not they're promoting a certain you know genre if you want to call it or a you know a feel at the club that's, that's understandable okay let me ask you about um, Sunday school you were talking about okay, I know we talked a little bit about Hebrew school but when, when I think of Sunday school I talk about I think about being a little kid and going to Sunday school mm -hmm. but you were saying yes. your Sunday school was well it was like that. what was your Sunday school like what do you yeah you like just went in you study and, about Jesus yeah, and like, learned Bible stories don't forget and, the snacks you always <laughs> gonna have the snacks well it was, it was actually on Sunday uh, since Jewish people will celebrate Saturday, basically. No, they, Friday do they night celebrate Saturday? Saturday? Or not or they, they celebrate, but they go don't. to church on Saturdays. Well, there's services in any temple on Friday night, Saturday morning. Saturday night, I'm not always sure about, but Sunday morning also. Oh, is there? Okay. But with the Orthodox and Ascetics, they're, you know, and that's why you see them walking. Mm -hmm. You know, they're biblical. They're, you know, it's, mm -hmm. they're acknowledging the Sabbath. So they, they walk to temple. So they live within, if you're Orthodox, you're living within probably a mile of where you're worshiping at. Because it's you're not supposed to work, walk any further than that. No, there's no. I don't. There's no 
set amount of distance oh, you are or are not allowed to walk. It's just that you need to be close. And especially in Cleveland, uh, you know, the in weather the and everything. Time. Yeah, because they're, they're faithful. They're loyal to it. Uh -huh. What's funny is I, I just thought about if they see someone like me who they consider less than human sometimes because I don't practice that or didn't, mm -hmm. they get aggressive. Oh. They've get, you know, they, they, they get mad. Oh, really? Yeah, they're not going to stone you like it tells them <laughs> to, but uh, they might come close. They do it in Israel, actually. They stone ambulances and stuff like that and police cars on the, oh. on the Sabbath. Well, because oh, yeah. there's supposed to be no work done at all, any kind Nothing. of work. I mean, I, I seen a uh, program on TV where they were had a, the um, the Orthodox Jews walking to to church, and I mean, even when temple, they come temple. or to temple, synagogue, temple, synagogue. Yeah. Even when they, I mean, even far as far as they prepare the food the day before, because their women are not allowed to go and cook in the kitchens. I mean, it's no work whatsoever. Right, nothing. There's nothing. You're not allowed to use anything mechanical. I don't believe you're allowed to put anything into your mouth. Basically, your Sunday school was like our Sunday school, except for they're just teaching something different. Yes, um, I'm sorry. I, I uh, got a little well away from the no, question. Okay. Um, yeah, it was a little more intense. Uh, the Jewish religion is, uh, it's not as, you know, smiley and... and perky, perky, fine. Perky, perky as is, is maybe Christianity can be, or, you know, maybe some forms of Catholicism, not forms, but whatever they teach you at church. Um and I just thought about this because I've He's, been at church lately. I've been to, I've attended a couple harvest, uh, uh -huh. you know. Yeah, you told me. And uh, it's very peaceful, and the band is great. Right. You know. Right. You know, in, in synagogue they have a cantor, which is a female singer, and uh, very very talented. You know, but uh, it's not the same as a band playing and you know, yeah, uh, uh -huh. let's party for Jesus and you know, like, <laughs> well, there, there, there's <laughs> a wide variety of of Christian churches from. You know, if you're going to a Southern Baptist church, as far as what they do to a regular Baptist church, to a Protestant, I mean, there's some churches you don't clap, you don't stand up, you don't, you stand, you know, you sing the song that's, there's no, no band. It might be, a, it might be a, it might be a piano or yeah. something. So there's a wide variety, probably just like in the, in the Jewish religion from what they may or may not have. Well, you know, it's becoming wider, like I said earlier, because of reform temples or you can, we could just call them liberal for, you know, argument's sake. And why do you think? That because they want they want to draw in more people or why they're becoming more liberal right or reform oh no because you're having um, no that's not at all what it is they only want to draw in Jewish people but the problem is that a lot of not the not the problem as I see it but the problem that maybe a lot of Jewish people see it is that a lot of people are marrying outside of their religion faith culture now a lot of Jewish people a lot of my friends are not married to Jewish girls you know, and when you have to be you have to be born from a Jewish woman to be a Jewish person correct and. She, though, can go through a thing called the mikvah where they, you know, convert. How long does that take? I think it takes a couple of years. Mm. Oh, it could I take a couple of years. I mean, you know, it sounds like Christianity is easier to convert to. That just takes 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Not even that. Yeah. <laughs> like 10 words. <laughs> yeah, the Jewish religion to, to is inclusive, if you want to call it that. But, you know, expanding outward now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And from, from what I see. Uh, and, and, yeah, so they want to grow, it basically. Well, I don't know if they want to grow. It's just that they're they have to accept. They don't want to grow. Actually, in my opinion, they it's inclusive. They they want to keep it. Yeah, I don't mean I don't mean grow. They don't like, want to shrink. Right. They want to grow as yeah. humans. Yeah, mm -hmm. but they don't want they don't want to let everybody in. But they want to grow as a Jewish nation. Right. Right. Okay. Um, you gonna get on your? Yeah, I was waiting to the twenty five minute mark, but yeah, I'll start now. Okay. Um. Did I answer everything that you asked me? I, was there something left Everything's out? Everything's great, yeah. but it's not through. You're not through yet. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to. We're going to do it half time. Okay. <laughs> All right, it's time to have a look at what's going on and where you can get it going on. The best impressions start at home. Elite furniture for affordable prices. For more information, contact Richard Boyd at 951-214-8555. Drama Stage Qumran has a weekly Veterans Theater workshop. It's led by Melvin Ishmael Johnson and Erlene Anthony. The workshop is on Wednesday nights from 4 to 6 p.m. And it's a free course, a free course in stage managing, playwriting, and more. If you'd like more information about this, feel free to contact Melvin at 213-908-6567 or email him at dramastage1 at yahoo.com. Positive Light is back with the kayak. If you know anything about our organization, we have a history of taking children kayaking. Uh, we take inner city kids. We take kids that are out of the city. We invite everyone to this event. The fundraiser will be held on August 22nd, and the actual kayaking trip will be held on September 19th. 
So mark your calendars. Uh, make sure to invite and, and look up some kids that'd be uh, perfect for this outreach. We uh, really excited about it. So spread the word. Uh, we'd like to thank our engineer, Cheyenne, for helping us. You're doing a great job, as usual. Thank you, Cheyenne. Um, if you'd like to be a part of our show through sponsorship, you can contact us at 951-789-1046. And to learn more about our nonprofit organization, it's called Positive Light Ministries. And if you want to make a donation, uh, just visit our website. It's positivelight.org. And uh, be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash wearepositivelight. All right, back to our discussion with Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Shante. Uh, yeah, so where were we when we uh, where we left off? Um, we were talking about you're saying the interracial or not interracial, but uh, oh yeah, marrying interfaith or interfaith interfaith intercultural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that it, is a good question though. Is there like do you see a lot of different other people like as far as like black Mexicans inside like inside the um, the temple or yeah the temple? Synagogue. Well, actually, um, there's a lot of black Jews out there. You know, there's, I grew, and where I grew up, actually, there's a whole community of them. I mean, it's a small community, but um, my current neighbor, actually, is a black Jew. He's got Jewish heritage. He looked it up on Ancestry.com. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know how accurate so it is. So are there but, actually some of them where they're actually born Jewish, where, like, their parents are Jewish and they're black, too? Or is it just, like, there's somewhere, like, you converted. know, they converted from from like Christianity or um, Catholic going into? No, I think that uh, down the line they were, uh, you know, because Judaism comes out of the Middle East, you know, which is right next to Africa and, you know, thousands of years ago, you know, the, Jew the Jewish religion is very old, you mm -hmm. know, so it was incorporated into, a lot of people incorporated it around that region back then, so. You were telling me that there, there's two kinds of Jewish people. You were saying like uh, there's like a white Jew and then there's a... Well, regional, regional-wise. Uh, ge I'm sorry, geographical-wise. There's Sephardic, which means Spanish in Hebrew. And then there's uh, Ashkenazic, which means European. Oh, because I have a friend that's half Brazilian and half Jewish. So is that like... Well, Sephardic that? means um, that there's... It's kind of like... Sephardic is kind of like saying to me, and I'll explain um, in a second, calling... Ohio or Missouri, the Midwest, when it's not the Midwest. Mm. Sephardic means because of the Inquisition, which happened in the 15th century, I believe, 16th century, mm -hmm. all the Jews were ran out of Spain. So they, they're called Sephardic for that reason, but they spread everywhere and they have different, you know, regional heritages, if you want to call it now. But the term is always there. You know, that's why I compare it to being Midwest. It's not really accurate necessarily because the Brazil, yeah, there are Brazilian Jews, there's a lot of them. Yeah. Actually, they... Um, they exiled there after, like, the Holocaust. I, I believe a lot of them did. Mm -hmm. If you want to call it exiled or, you know, they were mm -hmm. migrated there. I, yeah. I don't know. Are you familiar with Bill Handel? Uh-huh. He's, he's from Brazil. Exactly. <laughs> he's Brazilian. Right. He's a Brazilian Jew. Yeah. He looks very white. Yeah, that's how my friend looks. Right, like, right. One, yeah, you wouldn't know that he was Brazilian or Jewish by looking. I'm just looks well, like a white. And, but, but most Brazilians are Portuguese. They're not uh, of Hispanic descent. They're mostly oh, Portuguese. A lot of them look white. I mean, they don't yeah. look, mm -hmm. you know. They speak Portuguese. They yeah. have, you know, they're very heavily European influenced, their mm -hmm. their heritage. So, That's and cool. just like a lot of, mostly 90% of Jews are not Sephardic. They're European descent. Mm. But you'll see those ones that look maybe like they're from, you know, the Middle East or and there's some that are, you know, there's some that are black. Mm -hmm. There's actually exclusive black synagogues for, for Jews. There's one I was reading about in Philadelphia recently. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and what were you reading about it? I think just in general how, you know, uh -huh. the, because people aren't, the article was probably meant to educate people about it, how not everybody's oh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Jewish is white or, you mm -hmm. know, curly hair. And, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, I kind of wanted to, uh, and I'm hoping that you'll come back on the show. Um, Absolutely. And um, want to get into, like I said, politics, but... Um, there's a lot of, well, some people are saying that the Jews are not white, that they're black. And that uh, my little niece was saying that they, the, the, the Egyptians said that you went away black and you came back white. And they're, they're all, they're always talking that, you know, that thing. And, and I mean, what do you, what do you think about that? Or what, do you have an explanation or, I mean, if you don't, you know, I'm just saying that's what I always hear. Um, are you asking why people... Um, why would they say that? And I mean, they were, they're they like saying that... They refer to Jewish people as not being white. You or mean, not being... No, not being Jews. Like you, you're not a real Jewish person to them. Because oh, you're not the black. Orthodox, you mean to the, or, to the Orthodox or extreme religious people? No, to, to, to black a, people. That I'm not a real Jew? Right, because you're white. 
Oh, uh, I've never heard that, actually. I've heard the opposite of... I've heard, and it's come from a lot of black people, that I'm not white because I'm Jewish. Oh, you know, oh. or I'm not of, you know, Caucasian descent, which I am. I mean, you know, it's obvious. <laughs> it is obvious. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but those you've, never, you've never heard that then before. I have, but uh, not much, not much of that. That that you're not really Jewish and because you're, you're not, not really the, you're not really. You're not the descendants from, from. Um, Abraham. Abraham and stuff because. If you were Middle Eastern, then you're going to be more of the darker complected, you know, curlier hair, black features. If I showed you the, the pictures of my dad's side, you wouldn't say that. They're, they, <laughs> they, they look that way. Most right, of them uh -huh. at least do. But, um, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of, you know, there's Jews or it says in the Bible that they're going to scatter throughout the earth. Right. And, you know? and I mean, I don't I don't have a problem with yeah. it, but, you know, it, uh, it seems like a lot of um people and 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 when you come back we'll we'll touch on these things and um and um you know kind of talk about that but i wanted to ask you about your holidays the jewish holidays and um which well well hanukkah, about hanukkah hanukkah's my favorite eight uh -huh. eight gifts you know that's <laughs> that means christmas isn't christmas just one night yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eight yeah. times one year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you get eight gifts. You know, I always got the best ones up front, though. The 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 remaining six were usually not that good. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. They were clothes uh -huh. I didn't want to wear. You know? <laughs> oh, okay. But so that would be your. Uh, can you talk about the? You said you were telling me earlier that how many holidays are there? Um. Well, there's probably a little south of a dozen, but there are a lot of them are very minor. Like you were bringing up uh, Esther and Haman and that kind of thing. There's a holiday based upon that called Purim, which is not a most Jews wouldn't even know what it is. It's just a, like a pilgrimage, kind of like, you know, it's not uh, a real real holiday. There's three actual major high holidays, actually two high holidays and three major, I would consider. The two being Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year, uh -huh. which happens in September, depending on when the moon is at, you know, full circle. Um, also, the uh, Yom Kippur, which comes 10 days after, which is the Day of Forgiveness. Uh -huh. Jews... Uh, the Jewish religion teaches you that you just can't go into the temple and talk to a priest about uh, you know the affair you just had or whatever you oh. just whatever sin you committed. It's there's one day a year and you have to fast from sundown to you know sun sundown to sundown. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Whatever and, and that falls always ten days after the new year. Um, then there's Passover, which you know falls in the spring during Lent for if you're a Catholic or you're during the Easter time, mm -hmm. which is biblical. Biblically related, it's, you know, the 40 days, 40 nights in the desert, you know, but uh, it's based upon actually five days, I believe. Um, and you're only allowed to eat uh, unleavened bread, which is matzah, you know, because that's what they made. Yeah. They didn't have uh, yeast and wheat and all that stuff. So they, matzah is, you know, not non-yeasted. And so that's what you eat for a week. Oh, um, and... You lo you loved it, right? No, I hated it because <laughs> we a lot of times we were in New York actually for for spring break, uh -huh. which when I was in school and my father was a very strict Jew growing up, uh -huh. I he would buy me a hot dog but take the bun off. <laughs> I'm like I, I can't do this. I'm gonna go back. And, <laughs> I quit. <laughs> yeah. that, that that sucks. I mean, you know, yeah, hot dog that, without a bun. I, right. It's like what what's the purpose? What's the point? Right. right I uh -huh. don't. I want cheese and sauce on my pizza. I don't. You know. Right. <laughs> right. Right. But what you with pizza? They took the they took the bread away, right? So you would just get. Oh, you can't eat pizza. There's no. Don't even you know. You can't just order cheese and sauce. Yeah, it wouldn't be pizza. Yeah, <laughs> it wouldn't. You it can have matzo pizza. Sauce. Oh, matzo pizza, pizza is legal. Yeah, that's 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 that, that's a the, oh. they they green light that. That's the cheese and sauce is okay. It's just the bread. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So it has to be unleavened. Correct. So, unleavened bread exactly is the way to put it. So that's I, yeah. Oh, I was Go gonna ahead. say, um, talking about Passover and stuff. Um, I know there's a it's a big ritual as far as um, my understanding of where you sit at, um, you know um, exactly what you what you eat. I mean, you have certain types of yes. food. I mean, that's because they all symbolize. Absolutely. You know, so is that how it is with um, with with Hanukkah or Yom Kippur or anything where no. they have a, a strict. Hanukkah is, is they usually traditionally have eaten potato latkes, which are, you know, mm -hmm. I don't believe that's a Jewish thing. I think it's a cultural thing, isn't it? Uh, potato pancakes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? I thought they were Irish. <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, I think, I or think German, so. so. <laughs> it's, it's somewhere, Euro it's European, yeah. you know. Um, and, you know, for uh, Yom Kippur, I always remember eating, you know, gefilte fish, salmon, mm. 
and uh, uh, you know some other noodle kugel and that kind of stuff. <laughs> noodle kugel. The noodle kugel. It's called. It's uh, raisins and noodle with a little cream cheese. It's uh, half dessert, half not. Oh. <laughs> Maybe you can cook some and then just bring it to us next. Time. <laughs> I couldn't cook top ramen. Actually, I'm an awful cook. My mother, though, is. Uh, I mean, she could whip up matzo ball soup in her sleep. Wow. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. That, that is actually given on almost every holiday, matzo ball soup, except for Hanukkah, that she wouldn't break that out. It takes eight, eight hours to make. Whoa. Yeah. Done right. Done right. <laughs> okay. Now, um, we were kind of talking about uh, the ex- exodus um, the, when when the Jews um, left, or they weren't Jews at that time. They were Hebrews, I he, believe. They, they were Hebrew slaves. <laughs> yeah, Hebrew slaves, and uh, they left um, Egypt. And, um, and I guess what I really want to ask is, is when did you start, and I know you said, um, uh, when did you know that you were agnostic or just starting to leave the faith? Now, I, I think just listening to you that you're just fed up with it, growing up with it, and you're just tired of it, and you just didn't want anything do, to do with it for those reasons. Now, is that what made you think, well, you know what, this isn't, this isn't necessarily, this is too much work. No, um, actually, I never really, I always, you could use the word disregarded it growing up. Um, I had to go to temple or else I didn't go, get to watch TV, you know, or there was some other kind of punishment. Um, I disregarded it growing up and, you know, we talked a little bit about my drug issues and I decided to incorporate God. I was able to believe in it. I was going through a very, very hard time. I was living out of my car. This is years ago. Um, I was diagnosed with a virus, um, which is gone. <laughs> I, you know, I just to bring it all out there because it's it's healthy to talk about. Um, lost my job. I had done hard drugs for the last time. My boss, who was still my boss, fired me um, at that time because I, I had gotten arrested. And I decided it's time to take a change and you know, make a change. And started praying and believing in God. What I I didn't have any specific belief about who the God was I was praying to. Mm-hmm. But um, I incorporated it and I, I took it seriously. And I, <laughs> I was given a Bible actually and started reading it and started questioning it a little bit. And, you know, I was reading some other things and was swayed more towards that. But like, what kind of things were you questioning? Um, the name of you. Specifically Genesis, you know, the, the beginning book of the mm-hmm. Bible. And mm-hmm. the way it was put by the person who, the Bible is, is the Bible, but it was done by a pastor out of Riverside, actually. He has a lot of inserts in it and, you know, kind of tries to hold your hand as he, you know, guides you into faith. And I didn't really buy into what he was saying. Um, so I immediately started questioning it. I'm a very inquisitive person. So, and I was swayed the other way. You know, I'm not, I wouldn't say I was swayed the other way. I was swayed halfway the other way and, you know, to an ignorant pool, I guess you can say it. I, I told Willis this the other day, I claim ignor- ignorance when it comes to these things. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. Um, and that's kind of what happened, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, that that was I was kind of curious because you're you know growing up and a lot of people like they go to church or they make their children go to church you know three times a week like pastors' kids right and kids. then that that just turns them off completely when they they you know get of any kind of age where they have any kind of um, freedom yeah freedom or decisions can make their own decisions they they make the decision to get the heck away from it because it's just too much. What you're talking about is actually very interesting. And I was questioning um, some Christians that I know on Riverside. I had gone back home a couple of years ago to Cleveland. And I saw everybody, you know, the Jews and whatever. And I had this whole new view of, you know, believing in God and stuff. And I wanted, I, I wanted to always ask the people who I grew up with what they believed in. We never talked about it ever, ever, mm-hmm. which is, I, f- I find kind of strange. And I, I probably questioned three dozen people, three dozen Jews I, or more of people I grew up with. And they kind of claim the same thing I do which I found strange. They they don't have very strong faith. Some of them do in, in a creator. And with Christians, and, and to kind of answer what you were talking about, how they, you know, incorporating it with their children, making their kids go to church, they they buy into it. Kids buy into Christianity more so than they do Judaism, in my opinion. And well, I, I, think, it, it, I think, excuse me, um, reminds me of um, my daughter-in-law's grandmother. Um she was very, very upset when she became a Christian. And she says, you were born a Catholic, you'll die a Catholic. And, you know, didn't understand really what the Catholic religion, because she didn't oh, yes. practice, you know, Catholicism. But 
that's what her grandmother believed in. So it's like you're born a Jew, you're die a Jew. I mean, because that's what you are. Well, that's halfway true. But when it comes to religious beliefs, they are always a disposition. And it's, you know, you, you incorporate them into your life. You, you, you don't, you're not born into this world believing. I mean, I don't think so, that stuff. You know, I mean, you're, you're taught it. You know, do I think, I think that the majority of people, if, <laughs> if somebody was raised on an island and not taught the same things we're taught in society, I've got to believe that they would believe in God, though, still, you know, because of yeah, ignorance it's and like you curiosity. Go to, yeah, you go to India and there's like 18 million gods that, you know, people, at least even the, in the backwoods jungle, they, there's something in them that tells them they have to worship something. Yeah, Hinduism is a very exponentially polytheistic religion. I mean, they don't even, I can't, you couldn't even put a number Thousands, on how many gods they have. Yeah. Yeah. Millions. Yeah. Millions, I think. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, they. there's something in, I think, all of us that needs to worship something. Absolutely. And I, I believe that God put that in all of us and that we're supposed to worship him. And I mean, how does that work? Or why does, you know, why is it like that? Or that's just the way it is. So, I mean, like a lot of people think it's brainwashing a child into like the atheists believe that you're brainwashing your child into believing the way you want them to believe. And they don't really have a choice in the matter because that's all they really know. Yeah, but they're doing the same thing also is, you know, you're, you're, you're setting forth an ideology, even if you're somebody who very loosely, you know, someone like me, I, you know, I thought about this. I don't have children, but if I were to raise them, if I were to have them, how, what would I tell them? I don't know what to tell them because I, I would be drawn to take them to temple because that's what was done with me. And mm -hmm. I even, I have a few friends that have children that maybe sort of feel the same way. Actually, I have a very, a very, very Jewish friend. Uh, he grew up practicing all the, you know, the religion and stuff. And into this day, he's married to an Orthodox girl and they have children and their children are heavily involved in the Jewish religion, but he is an atheist. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, but he's like the only atheist Jew. I told you. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You know what? I, I, and I didn't do the stats. I didn't do my homework, but a lot, they say a lot of the, the Jews in Israel are atheists. Um, I, I think mean, they're I more secularism. Number. They're more secularist than they are atheist. I think, which is somebody who just doesn't want pol uh, religion and politics to mix. Oh yeah, I I, I didn't um, have a chance to do the research on that. No, you, you 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 you're not too far off from what I've seen from the you know the stats and everything. I think that there are a, a number of them who would claim either agnostic or atheist, mm -hmm. but uh, it's not what rules there, obviously. Oh, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, you know. But it's it's odd that that. Um, of people that, in my opinion, God is really blessed that that they would hold that or even think about holding that opinion. Or, uh, well, a lot of the they their opinion is ignorance. A lot of them, like you know, when I you know, from talking to a lot of them, it's not that there's no God. And you know, most atheists or agnostic will not come out and say that there's no God. They just I don't buy into it necessarily based upon a what I see. A specific one. Uh, you mean a specific God? Yeah. Well, that's, that's probably part of it. What, you know, what maybe draws people away from it is that there's a multitude of religions in the world, you mm -hmm. know, 23 actually major ones with mm -hmm. thousands of denominations. Yeah. Um, like that's part of what also has swayed me away from, you know, having an absolute belief about God. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I don't know. I think with Jewish people, it's, you know, it's maybe the education aspect of it. You know, Jews are the one thing that they're religious about is education, putting their kids mm -hmm. into school and, you know, yeah. secondary college education and even postgraduate and all that stuff. So that stuff's going to make people think and that might sway them away from being so religious, you know. But in the Bible, it's, you know, in the, in the Exodus story, it, you know, it suggests that they're very rebellious. Oh, you know? a stiff neck people. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, you know, I think. With, with Judaism, there is the cultural aspect of it, and then there's the religious aspect of it. So if you don't practice the religious part, you still, you're still maybe raised culturally right, with culturally, that. Yeah. Right, Because you know, it, is a, it is a whole culture. Like you said, you know, you do certain things just because that's the day you're supposed to do those things on. And I just saw something about that from uh, on, on the Yahoo News. It was from the American atheist president, who's a Jewish guy, David Silverman. <laughs> and he's saying that uh, the stuff that you practice as an atheist, if you're an atheist Jew, just say, just say I go to, you know, the, the foods I eat and some of the things I practice. Well, not necessarily the things I practice, but the things we eat. And maybe some of the, the light traditions are not religious. He says they're cultural. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't agree with him necessarily, but, uh, you know, they where's are. The, where's the line between the two? Right. I mean, you know, I don't know too many people uh, who aren't Jewish who don't eat matzah. You, know, you eat matzah? <laughs> 
I, I, we do um for um um um. Gosh, we don't eat we don't eat matzo. We we eat, we eat unleavened bread. But mat, I think a matzo ball's in the chicken broth or whatever the broth is or something. But unleavened right. bread ball. is the same, right? It's well, just matzo ball is just mixed with matzo meal. It's a yeah. it's a, a, you know like a powder. Um, oh, uh-huh. w- yes, it's not uh, leaven, but uh, you know, matzah is a hardened. You can crack it. It's oh, it's so what right, we, we right. eat for um, communion. Communion, yes. yeah. yeah, like a wafer. Yeah, it's a mm-hmm. it's a unleavened bread, like a cracker, almost like saltine. Yeah, but it's just real. It just doesn't have it's just any, bland. It's yeah. like it's, it's bland, like water but- and. Flour. But they do have flavor. They have all, you know, onion even. Or, oh. you know, it's, it's like a bagel, which is also a popular Jewish thing, you know. Oh, I've never had the flavored. Um, um, no, we just bread. ever had just spice up your communion. Yeah, spice up your yeah. communion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Give you a little sriracha sauce on it. <laughs> no. I think it was, I think what you're saying about the brainwashing, I think it's true. But then also at the same time, it's also different because... You know, you're you're Jewish, but yet you you have all different types. Like um, coming from my dad, my dad was grown up Catholic. My dad grew up Catholic. He did the, the everything. He did the communion and he did all that stuff. But when he met my mom, I grew up Christian. My mom, my mom grew up. She didn't know God yet until someone came to her house and um, came to her house and told her, "Hey, you know, we have a church down the street." And she didn't. My grandma didn't even know this church was down the street. Came to church and then I grew up. I grew up Christian. Now, when my mom and dad met each other, my grandparents had a big conflict with my gra- with my mom because they were like, oh, no, no, Catholic is better than Christian. And I was all like, and to me, I thought it was just all the same. You guys are worshiping the same people. But then as I got older, I talked to my dad about Catholic and he goes, yeah, we believe in the Mary. We believe in Joseph. We believe in all these other saints. I said, why do you believe in other saints? He goes, that's what I never, he said, that's what, that's what jogged me away from it because your grandma and grandpa always fed it down my throat. Oh, um, you need to worship Mary. You need to worship saints and all this. And I was just like, I don't think that because I was, I was pretty much what my parents tell me is I was born Christian. I was born Christian because I grew up Christian. I grew up in the same church for up to like 18 years. Same church. My best friend that I known ever since I was born is from the same church as me. So pretty much when my dad met my mom, he, they, he went from Catholic to Christian. And when he went that, he was like, I understand it more now. I understand what God is talking about more because in God, and he read the Bible, he read it back and forth and then he read it with the pastor back and forth and he understood it more that, he understood that God is just saying, don't worship the saints. And it went, it just tripped me out because it went from my grandparents going to Catholic to going to Christian. Now in my family, we have all different types of people. Now when we get together for ga- gatherings, we have two cousins who are atheists. Now when they come over, they start a whole community because they're just like, why do you believe in God? And they're just, and my grandparents are like, because like it says in the Bible, who wrote the Bible? And then they're like, oh, well, you know, Jesus, how do you know he wrote the Bible? Were you there? And like, they start quoting. And then it's just weird because first they go from atheist to they believe in Scientology to the point where like, they just believe in evolution. Well, Scientology is a, is, is, the, you might be thinking science. Scientology is a, another religion, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, I mean, cult. it's all crazy, and 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 I wanted to ask you, what would you teach your children? But we don't have any more time. I want to get some um, closing questions or closing comments. statements, comments. What do you need? I mean, come on, you, Brad. <laughs> closing comments. Spit it uh, out. Uh, based upon what we talked about today. Yeah. Oh, we had a great conversation today. Um, mm-hmm. I, I definitely want to do this again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I have so many. Uh, I could sit here and talk about. One of the topics we've talked about for days on end. So, yeah, that's yeah. usually how it is. We, hopefully, we can do this again. Yeah. Uh, we are, well, that's the plan. So, Nice. Oh, very, very interesting. Um, different, different aspects from, you know, what I've been raised around. I've been raised in a Christian family all my life. What I know is what I've read. Oh, and to touch real quick, um, I think what you were saying, I think that the only difference, and correct me if I'm wrong, like the difference between Christian, uh, Christianity and Catholicism is the same thing and also the purgatory thing. So, but it's still the same religion. You're well, still worshiping the well, same you God. you may be worshiping the same God, but they have a lot of practices that aren't necessarily. Yeah, they worship they, Mary as a... Well, and then they go to a priest for confession where I thought I can right, talk directly yeah. to it's, God. Yeah, it's you a, know? It so is, it's a whole different It practice. is a different whole <laughs> Simply, yeah, but simply what my parents... Yeah. Simply what my parents told me is me and Shai went to LACMA the, and we went to, we went to go see some stuff and one of the crosses had Jesus on it still and she's all like, why is that? And I said, you know the difference between Catholic and Christians, right? She said, no. She said, oh, the... On the top of the on the cross, it says the name. And I said, no, the difference between Christian and Catholics that my parents taught me were 
Catholics believe in that God rose, but his body stood on the cross. Christians believe in that God's body and his soul rose up to the heavens. So that's why if you notice, if you notice Christians wear a cross without Jesus, yeah, Jesus. and God, oh, okay. and Catholics wear it with Jesus. Mm. I never I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I never know that either. Oh, but we're um, completely out of time. So what I'm going to say is we are never more like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ than when we are loving, forgiving, and creating. Thank you guys for tuning in to Positive Perspective.